In the previous video we just made the NPC run randomly around the arena so now we're going to get him to sense us using sight and if we're seen he will chase us. So in the decision tree we have this sequence here and all it does is to move the player randomly around the game level. We need another sequence for chasing the player so we're gonna create one here We need a new black ball key, can see player, which is true, it's going to be a boolean, it's true when <clears throat> uh, the NPC can see the player. So we add a new key, call it can see player. We need to edit that header file where we're keeping out the strings of all our key names. So. Um, in here, blackboard keys, we need to add a new one of these. I have here a new diagram detailing the system we're going to build based on the previous tree. We will add a new sequence node to the right of the existing one and add what are known as decorators to both of these sequence nodes. Decorators affect the flow of control and in this example are like conditionals. When the decorator is true then the sequence it is on is selected by the selector. So here we have a decorator that is on the can't see player sequence. That is true when the boolean black ball key can see player is not set i.e. false. On the can see player sequence, the decorator is true when can see player is set, i.e. true. Can see player is going to be written to by the perception system, which we are going to add to the NPC's AI controller. This is going to be a sight perception system. So when you are in visible range of the NPC, can see player will be set to true, but when you are outside the NPC's range of perception, it will be set to false. The existing subtree on the can't see player sequence reads and writes the target location black ball vector key as before. And so we're going to do something similar in the new subtree on the can see player sequence as well. We need to write a custom task for the can see player sequence find player location that obtains the player's location and writes it to the black ball key. And for now we'll then use the built-in task move to to read that key and move to the player. So now we're going to write the custom C++ task find player location. Back in Unreal, um, save that. Um, let's create a new class, a new task in fact for this so it's a BT task blackboard base again and gonna call it find player location we need an include include behavior tree um, Behavior tree types. That one. Um, I think I'm going to make. Yes, yeah, going to make a blueprint from this. So I'll have to make this blueprintable. Public. Uh, we need a. We need a constructor for this. <coughs> takes that um, object initializer parameter <clears throat> and of course an execute task
looks like I need another header file. Oh no, because I misspelled it again. Having problems with American spellings. Uh, protected section will have. Um, yeah, we can have two variables in here. deviating from uh, the, other, the other series have a search random and a so it will randomly search for the player as opposed to just going to the player if that's true and that's going to be a float it should be the search radius We need um, a whole heap of includes. So, oh, set this up. Um, set the name, uh, node name is equal to text uh, find player location. So we get the player character and the NPC's controller. That's why we need U gameplay statics because we need to uh, call get player character. Pass a U world in there. Whoops. Get world. <clears throat> Note. Which um, where's that second parameter? Oh yeah, it's the player index. We've only got one, so it's zero. I <laughs> uh, need the controller. search random thing um, so if if uh, search random get a nav location object get the navigation system generate a random location near the player so 
get you now. Navigation system V1. Constant point two. Now sys equals. Navigation system. Get the world. If we've got that, generate this anyway. So if um, get random point in navigable radius again. doing it around the NPC and a much bigger area here we've I've set it's 150 which is quite small so instead of 1500 we can tweak that later if we create a blueprint from this so we get the blackboard and set the key set the target location false however then all we're going to do is uh, get the blackboard and set the key to the player location player location like that now I've just got to finish the task with success as before. successful uh, we go to um, our folder and click on this find player location and make a blueprint from it stick it in AI BP on the end check yes we can uh, we've got this search random and search radius let's just make that random and save that so now we can do the tree go back to the tree oh First of all, I will actually rename these nodes. So just instead of something useless sort of sequence, that'll be um, uh, go to random location. And this one, chase player. So 
So create another task and it's this one. And we just put move to I believe. No, wait. Now to make this work we need to um, <clears throat> add a decorator to these nodes, these two sequences. Um, so add a blackboard decorator. Which it's, uh, so if I click on that, the, black, the decorator is blue like this. Um, I'm going to put in here something meaningful so I can see what it is, what it's doing. Uh, and this is when you can't see the player. Let's capitalize it. For the most part. Right, um, it's all wrong. So um, when you come to the blackboard, we want to, first of all, we want it when it's not set. We don't want target location, we want can see player. Same thing here almost. Uh, another decorator, blackboard. Um, uh, these are a bit close, aren't they? I'm going to name that um, can see player. And um, is set is correct, and we want can see player. So the way this works is that um, when the tree starts, enters a root, comes to here, and goes down here. Now, if it can't see the player, it then executes all of these things over and over again. But the moment um, well, the moment it comes up and comes down again, if this becomes uh, true, that can, can see player becomes true, then it'll, it'll fail and come here and do this. Um, this is a somewhat inefficient way of doing it. In the next video, we're going to improve on these um, decorators because the entire tree has to be evaluated. I mean, it had, if it's in here and doing these and can see player becomes true, it doesn't abort, it comes back again and then it comes back and re-evaluates. So it's not totally efficient. So save everything. Yes, now we've got to add a perception component to the AI controller in game engine like Unreal, you can you have perception systems, and you can have one that that looks for things, sight. You can also have ones which hear, which listen for sounds to happen. In the controller for the AI, we need to add some stuff. So we need the uh, controller open. So private section, I'm going to add class, yeah, it's a sense config and there's uh, this one site, although I forward declared that we do need to add another include in from perception. types that's because we're going to have a an event fired uh, attached to a delegate make that work it's got to be a u function so it takes a, a number a tra of at of actors
this is a list of all the updated actors because this is only half of it we've got to um, red, uh, add a stimuli source to the actors we want to be perceived by the NPC updated actors I should call that uh, semicolon function to set up the perception system there's quite a lot of code in it and we'll put it in its own place all right i'm gonna make these aren't we so um what do we need we need um source component need blackboard keys need that need the world set up perceptions uh, function so set up perception system wasn't it we need the header for the AI perception component here's a complete setup code for the perception system first we create a UAI sense config site object and call it site config the next line creates a UAI perception component object and sets it as the current perception component using the set perception component. We then set the site radius. If the player moves within this radius, then he can be detected. Lose site radius is set to the site radius plus 50 units and beyond this radius the player will not be perceived. Uh, peripheral vision angle degrees is the field of view and he's set to 90 degrees so the NPC can only see in front. 360 would give all round vision. Max age is set to 5 seconds. This is the time after which the perceived stimulus is forgotten. Auto success range from last seen location allows an AI to continue to see a stimulus source if it remains close to the last seen location. This range defines how close the source has to stay from its last location to keep being seen. Detection by affiliation filters which types of stimuli sources are to be detected. Friendlies, enemies or neutrals are set all of these to true. Then the dominant sense on the perception component is set to sight. Then a function to call when something is perceived is set. And finally the sense is configured. Now I need to write the unupdated function which is called when the player is detected by the NPC. What we've got to do is go through each actor, get from that actor a list of its perceptions and then for loop through all of those. I made a mistake, we don't need on perception updated but on target perception updated instead. So I have another function here called on target detected. It has this definition and you of course need to add the declaration for this in the header. It takes a single actor and a stimulus. It tries to convert the actor to a player character. And if that is successful, then it writes whether or not the stimulus was successfully sensed to the black ball key can see player. The perception system on the NPC controller is only half the story. It detects stimuli sources. 
so we'll also need one of those on the player character so the NPC's perception can detect the player. So let's now add that stimuli source to the player character class. Go to this, to the header. Right, yes, we need to add a variable. Which is the perception stimulus. Perception stimuli source component. Pointer to just call it stimulus and a function to set up stimulus. Keep things a bit tidy. Create that definition. Right. We need some headers in the CPP. So we need um, perception system again, and it's um, AI perception stimuli source component. Bit of a mouthful. Also include. Register the sense the T subclass of UAI sense uh, site and stimulus getting errors here with perception system. Okay, um, must have misspelt the rather lengthy class name. This had a, a right um, angle bracket missing, and so that's all hunky dory, I think. So that should work. So, you know, we just create a, a stimulus uh, component, uh, register it with this. UI sense, sorry, with this sense site um, class to tell it it's a site um, stimuli and then register it with a perception system. If I do a build, success, back to Unreal. Yeah, we want to. Uh, what do we want to do? Did you want to? Yes, possibly make a blueprint class from. Uh, I've done that, I think. Um, 
it should work save that actually I think I need to move this plier across a bit so we're not immediately within his perception radius he's running around so I deliberately let him follow and so now it's following me not particularly well but we'll fix that in the next one there are some optimizations to be done but it's following they can easily lose it and as I say that will be fixed so that's it for this video uh, hope to see you in the next one